This is a King armored car. And the European nations, Germany, France, and England in particular, are taking civilian motor cars with robust engines and strong suspensions and armoring them, putting a turret on top of the armor cab. The idea being that horses, well, they're, they're subject to bullets and they don't react well to machine guns. Uh, but an armored car is going to provide the protection needed to the crew as well as giving the offensive capability of a machine gun or a light cannon. So in 1915 and 1916, the United States Marine Corps uh, contracts with the Armored Car Company and based on a King Auto Car frame, the Armored Car Company uh, is going to manufacture the King Armored Car. The King Car uh, is, uh, is going to be totally enclosed in steel. Uh, the idea being that squadrons of these cars, thus armored with a Lewis machine gun in the turret, we're going to be able to provide that offensive punch, not if, but when the United States enters into the European War. The first armored car squadron is formed, and eight of these armored cars are produced by the, uh, by the armored car company. Uh, the, uh, the Kings are tested. In fact, um, they are tested uh, on the roads surrounding Philadelphia, which the environmental behind me is meant to portray. The initial tests show that the King, while serving admirably as an armored car, is woefully underpowered. Um, the engine is not strong enough to propel the vehicle at speed. The transmission is very weak and quickly stripped out by the weight of the car. The tires are hard rubber tires and they're very narrow. So the initial set of tires on the vehicle are augmented by a double set of tires in the rear of the vehicle. The armored cars continue in service through the uh, early 1920s. Um, the uh, armored cars eventually make it out of the inventory by 1927, the last of them being sold to scrap or to private owners. The one behind us is the last surviving example of the King armored car. Directly in over top of the front wheel, uh, the front uh, left hand wheel, you'll see a small dimple in the armor of the car. Now we've all heard about proofing something. Uh, and the way that you would proof a piece of armor in order to prove that it was bulletproof was to take a sheet of this armor um, that had been produced and to fire at close range a 45 caliber uh, pistol round into that armor plate. A little dimple over the left front wheel of our King Armored Car shows a 45 caliber dimpled round where that armor plate was proofed by the 45 caliber. Now the paint job of our King Armored Car is a little radical. You might think it's kind of psychedelic, kind of 1960-ish. However, extensive research conducted by members of our museum staff uncovered a wide variety of photographs of the King being tested outside of the city of Philadelphia. By photographic analysis, we were able to determine that there were four colors on this vehicle, green, yellow, white, and black. 